how to catch the skew chisel. Um, skew chisel is a tool which terrifies a lot of beginners. They have a go, have a few catches, never go near the skew again, never do any spindle work or use an inferior tool. Uh, so I'll just show you how you can catch it when you want to, um, why the tool catches and just generally talk about the skew. Now we're going to have a look at why the skew chisel catches. What scares the daylights out of people which uh, when they first start the skew uh, they'll be cutting along quite happily and suddenly whack. Oh that was a good one. Um, and uh, you have a few of those you never want to go near the skew chisel again which is a real pity because it's a wonderful tool once you get the hang of it it also teaches you everything really you need to know about cutting let's get rid of that lot and have a look at why that happens so the constant in wood turning is the wood is always coming down onto the tool so and the aim to get a shear cut slicing cut is to have the portion of the edge cutting which is that angle at around 45 degrees to the oncoming wood so you get a nice shaving like that if you, if you um, now the dynamics of this cut are that the pressure of the wood is on the far side of the fulcrum where the tool is sitting on the rest which is roughly where that line is if you let the point of the cut come up to this side of the line there's space in under here and so the, there's no support for the tool so the wood's going to grab the point and that wax it back on to the rest. So I'll just do that in fairly slow motion for you. So I'm going to be fine when I'm cutting there and getting a shaving. Just let the point of the cut come on this side then start juddering around before the main event which is the point digging in that it comes back. I'll just do that again. I'm fine there but I've let the point of the cut come up to the edge it's going to grab back and of course when you're running faster then that's all the more dramatic so once you've grasped that kind of basic essential uh, the skew should be a lot easier now you can use the skew um, long point up long point short corner and generally you the one, two, three are the, the tool comes onto the rest, the bevel shoulder here comes onto the wood, you raise the handle until there's a bit of dust coming off the edge, then you move the tool forward. And you can go in either direction with the long point up. The other thing you've got to watch is that you keep the bevel this side here in contact with the wood if you don't keep it in contact with wood that gives you a smooth surface which uh, is a smooth it doesn't really show up very much uh, when we try to show it to you um, but if you let the bevel come off the wood as you're cutting, you get a kind of juddering. Just mark where the end is there. And when we switch it off, you'll find here there are cleanly cut ridges, which if my hand was a bit dirty, you'd probably see all right. Um, yes, you can just pick them up there. And if you run your fingernails over them, you can definitely feel them. Um, and if you ever get cleanly cut ridges like that, whether it's a bowl, uh, face work, anything, it's always a case of the bevel not rubbing. So to clean that up, just want to keep the bevel rubbing. few little knots this is a piece of fairly damp box elder which is what I've got at the moment um, now I generally do longer cuts uh, with uh, long coves and cylinders using the long point down so in this case when I'm cutting there the fulcrum is back here so 
that's where the wood's coming in, the fulcrum's back here and I've got a lot more control of the leverage and any pressure I put into the cut tends to go parallel to the axis be absorbed by the uh, by the headstock's end so to speak um, whereas if I'm cutting with the tool at right angles to the axis um, especially when the work gets thinner uh, it's much easier to have chatter marks and control problems so you can use the tool either way up so this is long point down you can still have a catch here but it's just a lot more difficult and it's not so easy I don't change hands I keep my hand pretty well near the ferrule on all tools and um, and tuck the handle into my side if I want to go the other way with the long point down and usually I'm leaning on the top of the lathe have my hand over the top uh, rather than trying to do it left-handed but it's not I don't often do this uh, it's not comfortable so if I want to go to the right then I tend to have the long point up now cutting a V groove uh, into uh, to get the tool into the wood you've got two options one is to um, the kind of pull shot approach where you line it up and just move the tool forwards or you can start with the handle fairly well down raise the handle pivot the edge into the wood and that really is uh, gives you a more accurate entry cut and then to cut a v-groove you then come over in from either side and the idea on this occasion, uh, there's a little knocking sound in here and I'd say I'm right on a knot. Let's have a look. Sound's very important in the, in when you're turning because, uh, yeah, and there's, a, there's a knot just in there. So I'll just move along so we don't get distracted by the sound so much. Whenever you hear a new sound, when you're, when you're a novice turner, just going to move the light a bit. Um, when you're a novice turner, every time you hear a new sound, you want to stop and try and find out what it is, just in case it's something nasty waiting to grab you. Now, looking at the V groove again, so we're trying to just a little central cut, just arc the tool into the wood, and then tilt it slightly left, slightly right. And the idea now is to have only the bevel side here rubbing against the wood. Think in terms of using the point. So I'll come down the left side here. And so as the tool comes in, there's space in behind the edge and the bit I've just cut. If I want to have a catch, all I have to do is roll the tool back so that this shoulder here grabs the edge so I'm coming in there just tilt it back and it's going to grab every time just in case you're not sure what's happened that's what's happened and doing it on the other side so I'm fine in here because the edge is clear of the bit I've just cut but just roll it over and I wimped out of that one I didn't wimp out of that one and it's amazing how often they come up as ram's horns as pairs like that but anyway you can see the damage that causes and that means that you're going to have to change your design unless you're just practicing like this so I'm going to roll those into beads I'll just do another couple of grooves up here first using the point of the tool oh, that was the genuine article just if you'd like to see the genuine article there it was a little bit minor but anyway it'll go soon enough gone 
So when you're cutting uh, a bead, um, the, you've got two options. One is to use the short corner and uh, take that around. The, the, the tool goes along the rest as it rolls over. I've still got a little kind of fuzz down in there which needs to come away from the earlier catch. So using the short corner you go along the rest, roll it over as you go. Or you can use a slicing cut just behind the short corner. Roll the tool over. It's slightly more difficult to do that. Uh, I find because you've you're really inviting a catch. You have to be a bit more secure with your grip on the on the rest. Going the other direction. Um, it's quite interesting here. When I'm using the cut that way, then my thumb is pushing the top of the tool round, preventing the kind of kickback. Uh, if you turn the tool over, then the thumb becomes a fulcrum. So I tend to have, you're less likely to have a catch if you have your hand over the top and now the fingers are working, the little fingers pulling the tool against your thumb. So that's the action there. And the right hand does all the rolling bits. Oops, this one's short corner. And I can hear another knot in there, just that little knocking sound. And if you can't see what you're doing with the short corner going in, you can take the tool away, turn it over and come in with a long point so you can see what you're doing. And those teeny little frills at the bottom of a, a V-cut or the bottom of a pair of beads, you don't need to kind of lean in there with pressure. Um, just going very delicately, the wood's not moving so fast. Uh, the nearer centre you get, the slower the wood's running. So. Um, you just have to be a little bit more patient. Roll it around there. And just flip it over and come into the bottom. Do another one here. So most of the evidence has gone there. I can't remember what happened up there, but there's a little bit of picked up grain. I've still got my big catch there, so just get rid of that. So coming in on the top of a bead, I'm going to swing the tool, swing the short corner through an arc. So then the bevel's rubbing underneath here. Going the other way. Short corner that time. And other things you can do with a skew chisel. Very handy is uh, if you want to take away wood quickly, um, you have a peeling cut which tends to leave the end grain pretty rough, not normally quite that rough, it's almost decorative. Um, but the, 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 the tool, the edge, is just below the surface of the wood, so what you're taking off is a roll of timber, so it's really peeling. And that is different to a scrape where you might have the tool in pointing in on the radius, so it's pointing right into the axis. Usually sounds horrible and doesn't usually do much for the timber either, it usually tears it up. So if you're inclined to use a skew chisel flat like a scraper and, and round, round the bead, Looks okay on uh, uh, probably if you're um, if you got the camera running on the lathe still running, uh, but if you stop it, then uh, it's going to look terrible. It's sandable, something like 80 grit, 
probably cope with it um, but it's not a good way of turning I've got very difficult grain um, and did we have some up here I can't remember um, there's a not there's a the pith coming up there but if you have very difficult grain you can ah we've got a whole area here which is still picked up which seems to be associated with that knot um, I've been peeling with the tool at that angle if I raise the handle slightly so it's now pitched up tools pitch up probably about uh, 25 degrees or so my skews have it doesn't even do this with a straight skew as well but my skews are a slight radius on uh, and I can just use the center of that for what I call a low peel and that gets rid of or coats with twisted grain quite well I can hear other things happening down there a little kind of flicking sound which is to do with the pith as it comes around but that's where there was torn grain it's gone picked up a little bit there but that's um, that can probably be cut and certainly be sanded but that's uh, that's fine so I can the low peel is very useful and uh, when I get to make uh, a little box video you'll see that in action um, be quite often where I don't want to risk having the grain picking out. If I want to cut uh, a little shoulder, and have that cut cleanly, I can use the, like a steep, uh, one side of a V groove to clean the end grain up, coming across the shoulder here, and use the short corner and come in. gives me a nice clean surface uh, but I also tend to use the long point up with the kind of peeling cut and then that just gets the, the nose of the tool under the grain but it does leave me a very nice clean surface and at the end of that uh, this doesn't work so well on wet wood but on dry wood it's you get a wonderful thin shaving coming off I can then just use the bevel side and roll the tool into the cut, no, it doesn't want to do it here, so you'll see that um, in some of the uh, videos where I'm using dry wood. Richard, I'm wondering why you don't get a catch when you put the point of the tool into the corner. Into there? Yeah. Um, I'm not... No, it's still flat on the rest, there's not very much pressure going in, so... Um, no, it, it's, uh, no, it's not a place where you catch if you've got the tool flat on the rest if you if you had it tilted up at all oh, I'm nervous about doing this then that'll do that was that the question? yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much uh, and that was um, we can blame Dave for that <laughs> right so to clean that up I can use the short corner Or I can use my little peeling cut and just clean up that corner with a little cut using the point of the tool. So. But you see all these cuts uh, in action uh, when I'm making the spinning tops, for instance, and also in boxes and uh, the end grain, um, uh, what is it, the pencil pot video too.